So here it is, the AMD RDNA 2 RX 6800 XT. Is it going to live up to all of the hype and be able to beat the RTX 3080? Well, let's do a real world review and let's find out. Hey guys, Tiago here. So basically, the topic of the day is going to be the 6800 XT. Now remember to subscribe because I'm also going to be talking about the 6800. That's actually right behind me here doing some benchmarks. So I want to do this review a little bit different. We're going to get many reviews with a lot of data, a lot of games. What I want to do is take this GPU and put it in one or two different systems that I've actually been using with the RTX GPUs, the 3080, 3070, and even the 3090. Look at the size difference. This 3090s absolutely massive compared to this GPU. So by doing a real world comparison with this GPU, I'll be able to tell you some of the data from some of the benchmarks coming from the exact same system, as well as some quality of life things such as like how noisy is it? How hot does it get? Can you really hear it even with a well insulated case? So we're going to break this review up in four categories. First is going to be the actual performance, primarily against the NVIDIA RTX GPUs. And of course, how is it going to perform against AMD's own 6800, which like I mentioned before, is doing some benchmarking right back there. The second category will be the price to performance, the value. How good of a value will this GPU be? Third, we're going to talk about the innovation. What has AMD brought to the table? And then fourth, we're going to talk about the aesthetics, how the GPU looks, how the build quality is, and things of that nature. So first, let's discuss the performance of the 6800 XT. Now, this is going to pretty much be competing with the RTX 3080. I think for the most part, that certainly holds to be true in certain times titles, this GPU does seem to outperform the RTX 3080. In other titles, the RTX 3080 is better. Of course, one major thing that we have to talk about here when it comes to performance, and that's going to be in the ray tracing performance. Now, NVIDIA certainly has had a bit of a head start with ray tracing. The 20 series GPUs, you guys remember, ray tracing really wasn't implemented to the full extent. It really wasn't too popular. It took them a long time to get it running, but I feel that at least now with the RTX 3000 series, ray tracing along with their other technologies like the LSS 2.0 have certainly improved to the point that gamers are actually start to expect these type of results and these type of graphics. So that's certainly going to be the biggest performance detriment if you're talking about Nvidia versus AMD. Ray tracing on this GPU certainly is going to be a good deal far behind. Now, if you're discussing regular rasterization and frames per second performance in traditional games, then yes, this GPU actually comes very close and beats the RTX 3080 in a lot of cases. So certainly kudos to AMD. They really put out a very competitive products. And the thing with ray tracing, I don't think it's a huge deal yet because you can't expect AMD's first foray in many years into the high-end market against NVIDIA to be competitive on every single front. I think they did the best that they could with the technology that they have. And it's certainly very impressive because for the first time, you could really say that NVIDIA actually has high-end competitors in the space. Of course, we're going to be getting the 6900 XT, which is going to perform even higher than this GPU. So I think the future certainly looks very bright. And then, of course, when we're talking performance of this GPU versus AMD Zone 6800, this one, especially for the price, and we're going to talk about that in the second category, certainly almost blows that GPU out of the water. Of course, the 6800 is more of a 1440. P card that's supposed to compete with the 3070 or possibly an upcoming 3070 Ti or something of that nature. This one is really meant as a 4K card to go up the 3080. So in terms of performance, let's give it a classical score. This is going to be a score out of 5 and for this GPU, I'm actually going to give it a 4 out of 5. I think even though ray tracing is not there yet and there are a lot of maybe things that streamers may be missing, maybe the codecs and maybe some of the encoders, especially for video editing, it's not quite there yet where it's at the same level perhaps at a 3080 across the board in every single case. I really do have to commend AMD for putting out a very high performing product and as long as the overall drivers during the next few months stay stable, the hardware proves to be stable, I think that this is definitely going to be a very good choice for a lot of people looking for a GPU at this price point. So for the next category, let's talk about the price to performance of this GPU. Now the MSRP of this one right here, the 6800 XT, is going to come in at $649. Of course the third party cards will probably be more expensive 
expensive, but we'll address those as they come out later. Now, compared to the 6800, this is actually a very good value, just because at $579, the 6800 isn't really performing anywhere close to this. So I would say if you're comparing the 6800 to the 6800 XT, this one for only around $80 more does present a much better value proposition. Now, if we're gonna talk about the 6800 XT versus the RTX 3080, which has an MSRP of $699, that's where things certainly get a little bit interesting. Now, it's a $50 price difference, and you have to remember the performance in terms of traditional games, while it is very close, this can beat the 3080 in certain games. 3080 will beat this, depending on which game it is. The 3080 certainly will have a pretty major advantage when it comes to ray tracing, as well as different encoders and things of that nature, if you know that you specifically need that. So if you know that you need those things and you want ray tracing, then actually for $50, the 3080 seems like a much better value. But at $649, this certainly isn't a terrible value. And you are getting a lot of very great performance. Would have been nice maybe to see this at like $599 and then possibly the 6800, maybe around like $499 or something like that. So that would have made, I think, a little bit more sense. We have to remember AMD really is the newcomer to the high-end market here. So they can't price them at a premium level like they can do with their CPUs now or even like Nvidia has been doing. That's why for the classical score on the value according to the performance and everything else that's on the market, I'm gonna give this about a 3.5, which is still a pretty good score for the performance that you're getting for $649 MSRP. It certainly presents itself at being a pretty good value, except that when you compare it to the 3080, only $50 more. I think for a lot of people, the 3080 certainly still will have some advantages. For the next category, let's talk about some of the innovations and features of this GPU. Now, of course, AMD has been playing catch up with Nvidia. So obviously right off the bat, innovations like ray tracing, even DLSS, AMD, at least for now, certainly will not be the leader in those areas, but it certainly does present a lot of really interesting things that are going on here as well. These GPUs in general will be more power efficient than the comparable Nvidia GPUs. So that performance per watt certainly is very impressive on GPUs like this, especially getting pretty close like to the RTX 3080 but being able to perform at a little bit more efficient level there is going to be some overclocking first it's going to be like a type of rage mode which is pretty interesting we're going to have to do more long-term testing to see how that's going to pan out across various games but of course you guys know about the smart access memory basically if you have a Ryzen 5000 CPU you can go into BIOS and activate certain settings that will unlock more performance from an RDNA 2 GPU so that way you can get on average from like 5 to 10 percent in certain games more frames per second performance so that certainly is a very innovative way that amd is trying to get more performance using their own cpus that's the first time that we've seen such a smart integration between a cpu and a gpu and now amd having both high-end gpus and cpus we can finally put them together and see how well optimized they are so that's definitely a huge plus for amd so for the classical score on the innovation and features i'm gonna give this a 3.5 of course that's still a very very good score. Nvidia is still ahead in terms of ray tracing, DLSS. There are many technologies that AMD still have to prove themselves that are going to be viable in the long term. Of course, we always talk about driver optimizations. We're hoping that the Radeon team will have great drivers going forward within the next few months as we see more users get these GPUs. And then for the fourth category, let's talk about the aesthetics and the appeal of the actual GPU. Now we're going to focus here on this, what is the Founders Edition or the reference GPU, if you will, from AMD themselves. Now, I think that the build quality is really exceptional. I really like the aesthetics. In fact, sometimes when you do a picture or a video, it almost looks like a 3D rendered GPU, even in person, like when it's, and when it's in your case. I think that's due to the very cool design. Now, some people did say that it kind of looks like a, a reference 2080 Ti, and I can kind of see that. Of course, the 2080 Ti just had two fans instead of three, but if you look at it, sort of from the side like this, it is sort of reminiscent of that design from last generation from Nvidia, but the design of this GPU still has enough unique elements that I really don't think it's that big of a deal. Even if you want to mount it vertically on your case, it looks very good this way. And of course it looks great this way as well. Um, of course, you're not gonna have like RGB all over the place. So these are very aesthetically pleasing, a very heavy GPU. So for the classical score on the sort of aesthetics and on the build quality, I'm gonna give this a four out of five, just because I think they did a pretty good job, even though it is a traditional three fan design, nothing too crazy going on here. So now that we've gone over some of the details for this GPU, I think that the real world usage so far 
far has been pretty good. Um, in fact, this one, the 6800 XT, does have a thicker cooler than the 6800. I actually found this one to be a little bit quieter in terms of like when the fans start to ramp up. I think it's probably due to this thicker cooler design, keeping the GPU a lot cooler, sort of when you're playing games or benchmarking or really stressing it. So overall, when this is in the case, I really didn't hear it as much. Sometimes these reference or founder edition GPUs, even the RTX 3080, along with the 6800 that I'm testing back there, when it's really stressed, sometimes it will make some noise. You'll get a little bit of like a whine noise. So in terms of the acoustics, I found the 3080 and the 3070 pretty close to what the 6800 is, but this one certainly is an improvement. It certainly was a lot less audible. So now let's talk about the 6800. Now that's going to come in at $579 in comparison to this, which is $649. Now, basically a lot of the things we spoke about with this GPU, like with the aesthetics, with the innovation, that's pretty much going to be the same and hold true for the 6800. Where the 6800 is really going to differ from something like this is going to be when we talk about the price to the performance. Now the performance of the 6800 is certainly a good deal less than this, but the 6800 still is outperforming the RTX 3070 for the most part. The big difference here is $579 versus $649. For that $80 difference, you basically get a 3080 competitor, while the 6800, while it is better than the 3070, it certainly is pretty far off from something like this. Of course, the 6800 may have some advantages over something like this. For the same price, you still get the same 16 gigabytes of VRAM, and VRAM is going to be an important area where these GPUs, even though they have the regular GDDR6, as opposed to something like the 3080, which has the faster GDDR6X, even though the 3080 has 10 gigabytes of VRAM, this has 16 gigabytes of VRAM along with the 6800, and AMD also has some smart technologies behind these GPUs, like their Infinity Cache sort of close that gap between this memory and the newer memory on the RTX 3080. This one really feels like an entire class above the 6800, so I would advise most people which GPU are you going to get, and I would say if you can, go for the 6800 XT. If it's only an $80 price difference, that's certainly going to be worth it. Now, the 6800 certainly is still a great card. It's going to outperform the 3070. It's going to have all of the benefits that something like this has, and it also may have more availability. And of course, as these GPUs are launching now, we're going to have to see how the launch actually goes in terms of stock and availability. That's going to be a huge factor for most people. If they can actually find stock of these GPUs, they're going to be in limited supply. Don't get me wrong, there's huge demand for these GPUs. But if people can actually find stock, AMD could certainly gain a considerable amount of market share from just people being able to buy these GPUs. All right, guys, so to sum everything up, AMD definitely has a fantastic effort going up against NVIDIA, considering this is really their first time in in a very long time competing against them in the highest end possible. Even this 6800 XT is already putting out a great competitive effort against the RTX 3080. So in conclusion, I do recommend this. I think most gamers will be very, very happy. Now, if you're going to compare this against the RTX 3080, it really is sort of a toss up. I mean, I know a lot of people will go towards the 3080 just because Nvidia has been a little more stabilized in the GPU market, but this certainly is a great alternative. And if in stock, it may actually be the only alternative that you have. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to leave a comment down below. Smash Smash that like button, subscribe. I will have more comparisons and videos on these GPUs, especially against NVIDIA going forward. And I'll see you guys on the next video.